Good morning, everybody. And welcome as we join together for our carol service this morning. It, it's really good, especially in these days, just to be able to do this this morning. Um, you'll have noticed on the screen earlier on that Zoom was up and active, and some folks were at home watching. Um, we're going to leave the Zoom running still by the laptop over there, just so that those folks want to still stay watching that way, they can do. Good morning, everyone. Um, and it's great to have everyone joining with us this morning. Uh, Facebook Live is also up and going at the minute as well. So we're on as many different platforms as we can, just as we join together to worship. I said, Emily, give them a wee wave this morning. You see the computer over there, you wave at that, and then hopefully they'll see you. Thank you, folks, as we join together. Um, just a couple of announcements, uh, if you can bear with me, just to run through uh, just at the very start of our service. Just to first of all say thank you to everyone who came along on Thursday to our donation day for the church envelopes and for food bank. Uh, we were overwhelmed again with the response, so thank you for taking the time to do that. Uh, it's very much appreciated and it makes a huge difference. Um, this is our carol service this morning, our traditional carol service, our service of carols and nine lessons that we have come to. Um, we still have in the plans our carol service for Wednesday evening, which is our alternative carol service with uh, videos um, and through um, scripture as well. At this stage, considering the announcements that have come out in the news, we'll keep a wee eye on what's going on and we'll update you probably on Tuesday again uh, at, to make sure it's definitely going ahead because we're expecting more guidance on Monday. Just to say then, because of all of what's going on, our Christmas morning service will simply be streamed through Facebook and on YouTube. So it will go up at 10 a.m. on Christmas morning. It'll be a short reflection, so please tune in for that. And then because, again, of the restrictions which are coming in, um, on Sunday the 27th of December, we're right in the time whenever they say they want us, particularly for one week, to be in as well as the remaining five weeks, but it's a tighter week. So we're not going to have an in-person service here in the church. Um, the Sunday after Christmas, I would generally take off. Um, our moderator has very kindly recorded a service for all the churches to be used. So that will be streamed again on Facebook and on YouTube at 11 o'clock on the 27th of December. And again, as things unfold over the next wee while, we'll keep you informed as to where we are with the church. So thank you. Those are all the announcements. Now I have the joy of doing birthday blessings. Maybe you say you wonder why it's joy because today I get to embarrass a member of my own family. So I can say that yesterday, Anne-Marie celebrated her 50th birthday. So well done, Anne-Marie. I'll pay for that later. Um, I can also say that Anna Wilson has a birthday coming up this week. Anna, we know you can't be with us this morning, but happy birthday for this week, for, for that. Alexandra Falloon, you also have a birthday this week. So happy birthday to Alexandra for that. And then we have two people who will be celebrating birthdays on Christmas Day. One of them who's not with us this morning is Jack Swan. So Jack, happy birthday for Christmas Day. And then one person is with us. Jenny, you'll have your birthday on Christmas Day. So happy birthday for Christmas Day as well. If anybody I have missed, I apologize, uh, but let's just pause and let's pray at this time. Oh, what was that? Alison, oh, Alison, when's your birthday? Are you Christmas Day as well? It's not on the database, hang on a minute. Add in. It'll get added in now. Thank you. Let's pause and let's pray together. Father, it's so good to be able to uh, share as a church family together, to be able to, to clap, to be able to, to laugh together, uh, just as we celebrate birthdays, past birthdays that are coming. Lord, for all the families, um, just put your hand upon them, bless them and look after them, uh, and continue with them this year, we pray. In Christ's name, amen. It has been a strange day year hasn't it it's been strange and difficult and as you think about that we we think this morning in particular about why we're here this morning why we come at christmas time um, isaiah in the bible tells us an awful lot about god and about the promises of jesus coming isaiah chapter 11 we have the fact that it's declared that jesus will come from um 
David's line, as it says in that first verse, out of the stump of David's family will grow a new shoot. But it's in Isaiah chapter 12 that we read this verse. See, God has come to save me. I will trust him and not be afraid. That's a personal declaration that God has come to save me, that I will not be afraid. And in this time of fear and this time of of unknownness, we turn to God asking him to look after us, care for us and protect us. So let's do that as we start our carol service. So Alison, it's very appropriate that you're going to come forward as our first reader then. (laughs) Alison's going to come forward and read our first lesson. God announces in the Garden of Eden that the seed of the woman shall bruise the serpent's head. Genesis 3 verses 8 to 16. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man, Where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? The man said, The woman you put here with me, she gave me some fruit from the tree and I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me and I ate. So the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and all wild animals. And you will crawl on your belly and will eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers, and he will crush your head, and you will strike his heel. Thank you, Alison. Let us praise God as we all join together, still seated, still with our face masks on, and as Morris helps to lead us, as we all sing together the words of that lovely carol, O come, all ye faithful.
Let us join together in prayer. Let's pray. Father, this morning is indeed a great and glorious day, a day whenever we can come together and celebrate the birth of your son, Jesus. Lord, we thank you on this, the fourth Sunday of Advent, that we have the freedom, the availability, the, just the, the opportunity to be able to do this together, not just in person, but also online as we join together. So Lord, wherever we are this morning, we just pray that this morning we would know your peace and your presence. Father, we think about that verse in Isaiah where we read, that see, God has come to save me. I will trust him and not be afraid. The Lord God is my strength and my song. He has given me victory. Father, thank you this morning. is about victory over sin through the coming of your son, Jesus, born to be our savior. Father, just as we worship together now, we ask that you would just join with us, that you fill this place and our homes with your spirits, that we just sent you, that we are close to you, that we have your peace. Father, continue with us now this morning, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Kirsty's going to come forward and read to us our second lesson. God promises to faithful Abraham that in his seed shall the nations of the earth be blessed. Genesis chapter 22, verses 15 to 18. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham from heaven a second time and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as the sand on the seashore. Your descendants will take possession of the cities of their enemies and through your offspring, all nations on earth will be blessed because you have obeyed me. Amen. Thanks, Kirsty. You can now sit back and relax and listen to the words of again another lovely piece which Morris is going to sing to us in the bleak midwinter.
worship the beloved with a kiss. What can I give him for as I am if I were a shell? Thank you, Morris. John Scott's going to come forward and read to us our third lesson. Christ's birth and kingdom are foretold by Isaiah. Read in Isaiah 9, verse 2, 6 and 7. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of a deep darkness, a light has dawned. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from the, that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Amen. Thank you, John. We're going to play for you now a video. It's a video song, uh, one we've had before called, Oh, What a Glorious Night. Now, if you don't know it, that's fine. You can simply listen to the words if you do know it and you want to join in, please join in. Let your feet tap, let your hands clap. Um, just, just enjoy this song, Oh, What a Glorious Night. came to see the baby stood by his mother's side here lay the savior inside a manger oh what a glorious night oh what a glorious night i hear the angels
was indeed a glorious night, the day that Jesus came. Let's hear a bit more of that story as Morris brings us now uh, the fourth uh, of our lessons. The prophet Micah foretells the glory of little Bethlehem. And we find this in Micah chapter 5, verses 2 to 4. But you, Bethlehem, though you are small among the clans of Judah... Out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from old, from ancient times. Therefore, Israel will be abandoned until the time when she who is in labor bears a son, and the rest of his brothers return to join the Israelites. He will stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they will live securely, for then his greatness will reach to the ends of the earth. Amen. Thanks, Morris. We're all going to sing together again another great traditional carol, Hark the Herald Angels Sing.
Lewis is going to come forward and read to us um, our fifth lesson. Luke's the Virgin Mary. Luke chapter 1, verses 26 to 38. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greeting, you who are highly favoured. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at, the, at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favour with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. Thank you, Lewis. Let us pause and let us pray at this time. Let us pray for our congregation. Let us pray for our land. Let us pray for our world. Father, we thank you that once again we can pause and come into your presence, that we can talk to you, that we can again give you thanks for being our God. We can give you thanks for sending Jesus to be our Savior. We can give thanks just knowing that you are always there for us through the ups and downs in life. Father, this time it is a down time. We are struggling, we are finding it difficult because of everything that's going on in the world around us and in our own land. Father, we have people within our own congregation who at this time are unwell. We have those who are grieving because they have lost loved ones. Father, whatever our situation this morning, we just ask that you would come near each and every family from this church, that you would put your arms around them and help them. Lord, whether it is illness physical illness or whether it is struggling with the the cost of what coronavirus has done to each of us be with those families whether it is bereavement lord and at this time it's so difficult to lose a loved one please bring your peace and your comfort father we hear so many messages from our government about how we all need to be responsible how we all need to get involved in what's going on and lord it's no different for us as a, as a Christian family. So Lord, help us to set the right example. Help us to give the right leads as people watch what we do, both in church and in our personal lives. Give us wisdom as we look at how best we can help those who are around us, how best we can bring your love in very practical ways, as well as being able to declare what you have done for us through Jesus. Lord, we thank you for uh, the, the work that's been done towards a vaccine within our worlds, and we thank you that that now starts to be rolled out to those, first of all, who are vulnerable and those who are working in difficult situations. Lord, we pray that this vaccine would be able to get distributed quickly and effectively, and that it would help and it would protect. But Lord, for all those who this Christmas can't do what they would normally would do, for those who are stuck somewhere else in the world who can't get home to see their family, Lord, be with them. Help them again to realize that they are not alone. Because, Father, we are truly never alone because you are always with us. Lord, we quite often think of Psalm 23 just in time of bereavement. As we think about that verse, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Lord, we realize that's a verse for every day of life. 
reminding us that you are always with us. Lord, right now we need your staff, your rod. We need your comfort and your protection. Please pour that out on us, we pray. Be with all of our families, wherever they are around the world. May they know peace and blessing that only you can give. Father, thank you. Lord, for the gifts that have been brought forward, uh, we thank you for those as well. We know that they will be used to your glory and to your honour, and we ask that you would bless them. And continue with us now through our service, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Julie Gillespie is going to come forward and read to us lesson number six. Matthew tells of the birth of Jesus. Matthew 1, verses 18 to 23. This is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother, Mary, was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Amen. Thank you, Julie. We have another video for you now. This is one which I played um, last couple of weeks, one which uh, PCI released to us. Uh, lovely words, and it's called Hear the Bells Ringing. Let's get this a wee try. Oh 
Phil's going to come forward and read to us our seventh lesson. The shepherds go to the manger, Luke 2, verses 8 to 16. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks by night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. Thank you, Phil. After we hear that story of Jesus being born, there's only one carol which we could possibly all sing together, Away in a Manger. Let's worship God as we sing this together. Fiona's going to come forward and read to us lesson number eight. The wise men are led by the star to Jesus. Matthew 2, verses 1 to 11. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. 
In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least amongst the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Amen. Thank you, Fiona. You know, in a carol service, we bring together all different readings from different parts of the Bible. We bring together different carols as well. This maybe next carol you're going to listen to was, is one that has been immortalized by Boney M. And Morris is going to come forward and sing to us, Mary's Boy Child. Eileen actually um, is going to show how much more superior you ladies are than men. And she is going to be double, double tasking. She's going to sing the uh, alto part uh, along with me. So uh, thank you, Eileen. time 
Let us hear our ninth lesson. John unfolds the great mystery of the Incarnation. It's John chapter 1, verses 1 to 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning, through whom all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light, he only came as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world, he was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God's. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Amen. Think about that first Christmas. Think about that time whenever Jesus came and was born. The Israelites were living under Roman rule. As Morris has already said, it was a bleak time. It was difficult for them. They were living in impression. They had, they had gone out of Egypt to get away from slavery, and now all of a sudden, they are back in slavery again. On top of all of that, they were now told that they had to go to the town where their family came from to be counted so that the Romans could tax them. On top of that, Mary was pregnant and now she faced a very difficult journey one which we assume she probably made on the back of a donkey one which was arduous one which she did just with her and Joseph there was no other family with her and especially as she came near the time to give birth to her child she didn't have the normal support that she would have and then, when they get to Bethlehem, they don't even find somewhere to stay. They end up in a stable. And in that place, Jesus is born. Now Mary, like us at the minute, could have complained about everything. But like us, we're grumbling about everything that's going on around us. But Mary didn't do that. We are told in Luke chapter 2, Mary kept all these things in her heart and thought about them often. You see, even in the midst of all that was going on, Mary had something special. She had joy. 
joy that very first Christmas. Joy of realizing that that little baby that she carried was a special baby. That baby was a gift from God, born to be Savior, born to be Emmanuel, God with us. In the midst of all that trouble, she took time to reflect, time to remember, time to rejoice. This Christmas time, in the midst of all that we have going on, what about taking some time to reflect? Reflect on all the goodness that God has given to you, all the good things that have come your way, even in the midst of all the trouble that we see around us. The goodness of having a saviour, Jesus, born for you and me. A personal saviour who wants to know you. So in the middle of this Christmas time, in the middle of this pandemic, I pray that you would truly know the joy of having Christ in your heart. That in the midst of all that's going on, that you would take that time to reflect This is the perfect Christmas to do it. There are so many things that we cannot do this year. So that's how about seeing something positive? How about having that time when we can't do something else? To give thanks to God. Just to to quietly reflect and give thanks that we have that joy of having a saviour. May you know joy and peace this Christmas. Let us join in together as we sing our closing carol, Joy to the World, the Lord Has Come. Let's sing together. Let us pray together. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Heavenly Father, and the fellowship of his Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forevermore we pray. Amen. Folks, thank you for coming out this morning and joining with us in our carol service. Thank you to everybody who has helped out this morning. Um, We had a couple of people who took ill last minute, and some people had to juggle around and double jobs. So thank you to everybody who did that. For those who are not well, our thoughts and prayers are very much with them this morning, and we trust that they feel better soon. Um, Just let me also say at this time, thank you to all of our stewards uh, and to Stephen for all the organization that he's been doing week in and week out. You've helped to keep us safe, and you continue to do so, so thank you for all that work. Thank you to our elders, our stewards, for doing that. We really do appreciate it. Folks, normally we would have sweets to give out at this time, uh, and they are sitting in my office, but again... With the current pandemic, we feel that it would not be a good idea for everyone's hands to be delving into a bag of sweets at the same time. Um, But thank you for the thought, uh, for those who provided those sweets. 
uh, they will not go um, without being given to a good cause. But folks, as we go from this church now, again, can I just remind, remind you to, to keep your distance, be safe. And if you're going to chat to folks outside, that's fine. But please just keep that bit of distance between yourselves. Please keep your face masks on. Let's protect one another at this time. But may you go with God's peace and God's blessing and stay safe. Thank you, folks. Take care.